Kevin is the founder of Instagram, which, you know, in terms of, you know, generational tech, talk about building an amazing business, but also building something with such cultural clout. So it's amazing to have you here. And just as all of you have taken time to build tech for the open source tech for the common good, Kevin, you have done that too on a large scale. So let's kick it off on talking about RT.Live. Yeah, so I'm working on a project now called RT Live. If, if the theme is how do we use our brains to solve problems for the world that the world actually needs, um, you know, Instagram I think was a phenomenal success, and and a lot of people really love it. Over a billion people use it every month. Um, but when I left, I asked myself, okay, what types of projects do I want to work on? And I had no idea COVID would happen, obviously. But when it did happen, I felt like there was a void for. Uh, for information out there that was that was well analyzed and well presented to people and i kept asking myself what's the one thing i want to know and if i were running a state or you know a country what would i want to know and i discovered this metric that is very well known in the epidemiology uh uh community called the effective r rt um and effect effectively the what it is is it's if you're sick you know steve how many people do you make sick, right? And over the course of your infection, if, if person A gets sick and gives it to three people over the course of their infection, RT is three. Mm -hmm. And if everyone's the same, then RT is three, right? And of course, not everyone's the same and people give it to different numbers of people. But the reason why this is important is because if R is less than one, then, uh, then the virus basically shrinks, right? The outbreak shrinks because you know each person gives it to less than one person, therefore it has to shrink. If it's larger than one, it grows exponentially, and that's a bad thing. And if you go to the site rt.live, um, you can actually see a, on a state-by-state -state basis what RT is for any given state over time, and you can see the effect of lockdowns, reopenings, et cetera. So my goal was to be apolitical, factual, mm -hmm. just show people the data, and hopefully people will make better decisions uh, based on the data that they get to see. That's the idea. How did you go from um, having this idea like, hey, I want to do something to help the transmission rate to a site that I know governors and mayors and epidemiologists check every single morning like they're checking the weather? The most important uh, uh, step in the product building process is to start with the problem you're solving for people. Um, if you root everything you do in a problem that people actually have, you're pretty much guaranteed some customers, right? Like maybe not a billion customers, but you're guaranteed some customers. If you solve a problem for people at a price that makes sense, and that price could be time, it could be money, then, then you're guaranteed some amount of, uh, of customers. And so what I did was I just sat down and I said, I feel in the dark as to whether or not this is going well, our efforts are going well of lockdown, or whether our efforts are going poorly. So how would I answer that? And it turns out a lot of other people feel the same way. They feel in the dark and they don't know if it's going well. They see these charts that go up and to the right, but they don't really trust them and testing volume and all these other things like delays and lags and just noise. Um, it makes you question the data. So the problem was, can we solve all of those things and present people an actual view of what's going on? And I think the answer is yes. So start with the problem. Find the solution that elegantly solves that problem, and uh, and now you know, you know about I don't know a little over a hundred thousand people visit it every day, and that's like a big number for a site that started like a month or two ago. I mean, it's not Instagram numbers, but yeah, uh, I'm I'm pretty psyched about it. I know you have many more uh, many more games left to play. Is there anything you're focusing on now you can share, or just things you're interested in? Well, I won't talk about specific ideas, but what I will say is. Um, Data is really interesting to me because I think, number one, not enough data gets collected. When it does collect it, I think it kind of lays dormant. It's like fallow land, right? It just sits there. It doesn't get used productively. Uh, and then when people try to use it productively, I think a lot of mistakes are made and, and misinterpretations are made. And then it's not presented well either. Like, if you have conclusions or a synthesis that comes out of data, um, it's often lost in translation. So the idea that you're going to go from data to insight to action, to me, feels like there are a lot of tools that solve collecting data. There are a lot of tools that solve graphing data, 
right? Like Tableau or something. And you're seeing this world kind of thrive because now everyone's collecting lots of data, um, but it feels piecemeal and it feels, feels like there's an opportunity to do big work in there to let data drive decisions. And that's an area I'm pretty excited about. We all know that you know, in times of great business and social change, disruption, some amazing companies are always born out of the, these fires. Um, what advice do you have for all our, young, our, you're still a very young man yourself, but younger CEOs, younger founders, like wh what advice do you have them about entrepreneurship in general right now? I mean, I'll come back to what we talked about before. Focus on solving a really effing important problem. I'm not gonna swear because this is Zoom, but like really important problem for as many people as possible. Ask yourself, you know, I go around the sun so many times in my life. How will I measure my, the impact of my life? And, and don't set your sights low for niche solutions, for niche problems, like find big problems and solve them. That doesn't mean you have to send people to the moon. That doesn't mean Mars, right? Like, but you can take on big problems, bigger than you'd probably imagine you could take on. Um, find those problems and then solve a small part of the problem and then a slightly larger part of the problem and slightly larger. But what you need to do is identify that problem and then also figure out how you can expand into it and see the runway that you have in front of you and say, yeah, I can work on this for 20 years and we still won't be done. That's the kind of, that's the kind of company you wanna start.